What's up everybody, it's your boy Charlie Savage and today I hope you're having a fantastic new year as we go into 2024, but today I'm here to talk about my backlog. Remember I made that little like kind of video essay, very light, I, it, I don't know what else you'd call it, you know, just a, a YouTube video honestly. So at the end of the year I always look at what games are coming out next year and I realized that there is not a whole lot for me to look forward to in 2024 in terms of major games. Like, yeah, they're remaking Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Mmm, bananas. Mm. And Peach gets a new game. And those could be neat. But there aren't too many big titles that I'm truly excited for. But I will be covering those games when the time But I think this year is finally the year. The year I conquer my backlog. For far too long have I had this absurd backlog. I've totally surrendered myself to the paralysis of choice. I really just need to start diving in for my own sake. Because in reality, this year, even though I had a lot more YouTube success, I hardly played games at all in 2023. I only played a handful of games, including Mario Kart 8 DLC, a little bit of Street Fighter V, Spider-Man, maybe some Abzu Untitled Goose game, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered, and of course, an ungodly amount of Jedi Survivor. But overall, I played maybe like 14 games total, and I just rolled credits on about half of them. Like, I didn't even finish Concrete Genie this year. So, there's tons of games like that that I'm looking to dive back into. The point is, I want to not only prioritize gaming, but YouTube again, because I feel that it genuinely makes me happy. I have honestly been less interested in gaming this past year, and that's been a bit to my detriment. Because even though games like Jedi Survivor and Spider-Man 2 were phenomenal standouts, I did enjoy my time with other games like Abzu or Entitled Goose Game. So... With that being said, I'm definitely going in with some rules and some conditions for myself in order to make sure I enjoy the to the fullest extent. With that being said, let's go over the rules and conditions basically that I'm like setting for myself, these sort of parameters, if you will. Um, here are the rules. Number one, no games longer than 40 hours. Let's be honest, I'm still working a job 8 through 5, Monday through Friday, and that's 40 hours a week, most every week for 52 weeks. And this is just over 2,000 hours of labor, not including like my lunch break or vacation or holidays, um, you know, in which I may just want to relax. And, you know, maybe I want to make YouTube videos like I am doing on my day off right now. However, this gives me about 700. But with that being said, at best, I get maybe 15 to 20 hours a week to play games. So assuming after I get home, work out, have dinner and, you know, get to working on a YouTube video for the day. This gives me about 780 to 1,040 hours a year just to play games. But this in this time, a lot of that time, I will definitely be, you know, writing and editing those videos as well as just, you know, flat out recording them. So I just know that I can't expect to play a game for the equivalent of a work week while working full time and have it be sustainable unless I can guarantee myself like long binge sessions on weekends, you know. Just knock out you know, like 12 hours of like Persona 4 Golden or something. Like that's not necessarily something I can do. And you know, that's what makes this a little bit more challenging. But also by having that role, I can kind of keep going through game after game after game. And hopefully I will be enjoying it and not putting too much stress on myself. My second rule is that I'm going to stick to modern consoles and PC. So, you know, that's PS5, that's Switch, my gaming PC. Um... And I don't know how many of you are familiar with this, but I have a ton of physical games. There's just like a giant shelf with PlayStation games like right next to me. Um, the point being is that I would list would just simply be way too long unless I just like spent a day just trying out each game and made a video about it. Like that's I might do that at some point, but the point is I'm gonna get through you know games that people are at least somewhat talking about or something more recent. Because you can always go back and play old games. There's pretty much infinite old games, you know, unless you have an ungodly amount of money and free time. But, you know, there's tons of things that you can, you know, spend your time playing. So I definitely want to, like, try to at least stick to these. And then maybe I'll, you know, bust out PS3 and we'll go over a few games I didn't ever play or something one day. But overall, I just want to keep it to PS5, Switch, and PC. The third rule, I don't have to beat every game. And the truth of the matter is that I simply can't and won't realistically like every single game that I play. And that's a bit of an unfortunate truth. It'd be awesome if you could love every game ever. But, you know, that's just the way it is. 
So now these games that I drop, they may not get a full review, but my personal commitment is that I will at least write like a paragraph of my thoughts as a review. Maybe I'll come back to it. Maybe I'll make a YouTube short out of it. But as I go through my list of games, I want that to be something that's a bit more, uh, you know, indicative of my experience. So, so I can at least put words to it and explain, hey, this is why I didn't like this game that I stopped playing. Rather than just being like, yeah, it was bad. I was in a bad mood. Like, But like, I've definitely had games like Bioshock where I was like, I'm not too crazy about this. And I just kind of dropped it for no real reason. And, you know, I want to at least write out why I didn't like it. So that's what that is. The fourth rule. I don't have to fully finish the backlog by the end of the year. Let's be realistic here. Uh, the point of this is that I can play many of the games that I already have to have awesome and amazing experiences. This goal isn't to prove that I'm the best at games or that I can beat a lot of games or I beat games better than other people, but that I can have these wonderful experiences that make gaming special. I'm not doing this to get my money's worth per se, but rather the same reason as to why I branched out and watched new movies and new music this past year. This year, I've, for the first time, experienced so many movies that are special to me, like Princess Mononoke, American Graffiti, Bullet Train, and even the Shin Godzilla film. I thought those were all outstanding experiences that I experienced for the very first time this year, and I absolutely love that. And I want, you know, that similar relationship with games, where it's like, yeah, I took like a week, in, or I took a work week, and I played through this game, and it was an amazing experience while it lasted, and I'm happy to talk about it. Because, you know, doing reviews... Um, podcasts and just generally spreading my love of video games is kind of what I'm all about. That's kind of the formula. That's who I am. And that's what I want to do on YouTube is talk about why I like these games. And I want to do that rather than being in the situation where I'm like, oh my God, I have to beat, you know, this random text adventure I picked up by Friday so that I can do other things. Um, you know, obviously there's some sort of deadlines, but I don't want it to be the main focus. Um, and then finally, my fifth rule, no replays outside of Let's Plays. Um, my main goal is to not replay the same games over and over again, at least not habitually. Like, yes, I'll probably be, boot up a game to grab some footage, or even I'll revisit a level here or there if I want to talk about it, but I don't want to be doing full playthroughs outside of video content. And in addition to this, I want to avoid any games that have several sequels. Like, I know what an Assassin's Creed game is like. Do I really need to play Rogue Remastered? I might get to it, but at the time, that's a low-priority game going forward. And then, the final question you're probably wondering is, hey, what the hell is this guy even going to play? He's been making this video. Why do you, what is he going to play? And the answer is, I have a bunch of games that I'm unfinished, and I have at other priority levels. So, basically, like, tier zero of this, if you think, like, above... You know, like, the Tier 1 games would be, like, the games I really want to play. And the Tier 0 games, it's like, well, these are immediate problems, and I'll, I should probably beat these because I'm nearly done with these games, or I just never got around and, like, maybe I'm halfway through. But, you know, that will still be a good experience. So, here's what the unfinished games are. And, God, is it, you know, a list that bothers me. Uh, for some reason, I never finished Uncharted 4. I just, like was in college, and then I kind of just got a life, and I just dropped that game. That's kind of what happened. Um, like, and I think that was, like, pretty sure that was, like, my freshman year, right? Like, 2017? I don't know. And when I started it, and I was like, ah, eh, yeah, I gotta do other things. Um, Psychonauts, I don't know why I dropped. I love Psychonauts. Psychonauts is fucking awesome. Um, Concrete Genie, I played for, like, an hour and a half. It seemed really fun. I know it's not a super long game, but I think it's going to be, you know, a really good time and I go back to it. Metroid Prime was actually just kind of difficult and, uh, you know, that's rather the more recent one on the Switch, um, the remake. And, you know, I still want to play that game. It was really fun. It's just the checkpoints and save system, not my favorite part. Um, Jumping Flash is a PlayStation 1 classic that I didn't finish, but I'm like kind of halfway through, so I'm just like, I'll just add it to the list sort of thing. Just Cause 3, I've conquered entire sections of that game's map, and I need to actually just finish the story. Sackboy Big Adventure, I am not even sure if I want to stream this game that much, but I feel like I can just kind of play it for like an hour here and there, different nights when I want to chill and relax and just play a fun platforming game. Um, Saints Row 4, um, 
I thought I beat this game, but I don't have all the trophies, so I didn't do the one. I literally played up into the last mission and collected everything else. So I'll probably just do that <laughs> and, you know, uh, Killzone Shadowfall I also never finished, but I'm pretty sure I softlocked the game, so uh, we'll see how that goes. I want to get back into that. It was fun when I, like, I played it, like, when the PS4 first came out and literally didn't touch it since. And then The Order 1886 is so short, I can't justify not finishing the game. It's, I've played like an hour, maybe 30 minutes, and it's like six hours. Yeah, I should probably get that done with. Now, the next tier is my very high priority tier. This is like tier one, that other stuff, tier zero. It's like, this shouldn't even be on the list, but you should, you also should have done it. This is the games I want to play. And of course, they're all PlayStation exclusives. If you know me, then you'll know that I'm a bit of a PlayStation guy, but there's games I've been a little, I've been lacking lately. You know, I've been I've been pretty lack lackative. Lack. I have been lazy. So God of War Ragnarok. We're starting that today, 2 p.m. on my Twitch. Hopefully, and my YouTube. We'll see how the streaming goes. Last of Us Part Two. Um, there was so much discourse around the game, and it was it seemed incredibly toxic for what seemed like a pretty solid game, but. You know, I can now make like a video essay and be like, I never played it then. I'm playing it now. And it's whatever my opinion will be. I don't know. Probably like fine. I'll probably think it's like just good and too long. Apparently the game's like 20 hours. That's, that's dude. I just, the other one was like the perfect length. I like that, but that's just me. I'm weird. Um, I've also never played Shadow of the Colossus. Unfortunately, I know how it ends because I've seen a video essay, but I still feel like it's probably an incredible experience and something I need to do. Um, and then the other game on there, uh, at this tier, because I love Naughty Dog, they are my favorite studio, even though I didn't, I kind of stopped playing their games for a while. Um, Uncharted Lost Legacy. I was, I, obviously I didn't beat Uncharted 4. Why would I move on to Lost Legacy? You probably could. I don't really know. I know nothing about this game. I just know that it has Chloe and Nadine, and I like both of them, kind of. Um, anyway, on to my next tier. This is probably like, you know, if that was my S tier, this is my A tier. Or maybe tier two. Whatever the hell you want to say. I don't know how you want to do these tiers, man. But, here we go. The high priority games. There's 16 of these. Ape Escape, Bloodborne, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Child of Light, Gravity Rush, Guardians of the Galaxy, Hollow Knight, Hotline Miami 2. I love the first one. Um, I Am Setsuna, Just Cause 4, Mega Man 11, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Star Wars Squadrons, Tachia, Tearaway Unfolded, and TMNT Shredder's Revenge. When we look at this next tier, these are games where it's like I've been told they're good but not very interested, or I'm interested but I've heard not great things about them. That's kind of what this is. And that's going to be games like A Plague Tale Innocence, uh, Bastion, I want to give Bioshock another chance, Broken Age, Contrast, Control, Darksiders, Days Gone, Destroy All Humans, Detroit Become Human, which I always love that they're next to each other, um, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Dishonor, Everybody's Gone to Rapture, Heavy Rain, Far Cry 3, Fist of the North Star, Lost Paradise, Ghost Runner, Knack, Life is Strange, Resident Evil 7, and Resident Evil 4 Remake, as well as Shantae, Super Hot, I Am Bread, Tales from the Borderlands, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, and Unraveled. Um, I've never played any of the Tomb Raider games, so I kind of want to get through all of those at some point, because they seem super up my alley. I loved Uncharted, so it it stands to reason why I wouldn't like um, Tomb Raider. And low-priority games are just kind of games that I have that I'm just like, I'd probably prefer them over what's uh, the, uh, the games I didn't decide to put on the list. The ones where I'm like, I, I should probably play that just a little bit. You know, just like, yeah. So in those games are Agents of Mayhem, Batman by Telltale, Back to the Future by Telltale, uh, Beyond Two Souls, Bulletstorm, Citizens of Earth, Deep Rock Galactic, Doom 64, Dust and Elysian Tale, Entwined, Ether One, Hot Wheels Unleashed, even though I think that's not even a game you necessarily beat, you just kind of play it. Um, <laughs> Injustice 2, Late Shift, Mad Max, Mafia 1 and 2, because I've played 3. Um, Maneater, Star Wars Racer, Bounty Hunter, I have a lot of nostalgia for, so I want to get back into it and actually beat the game, because I never did as a kid. Uh, and then, you know, uh, Star Wars Jedi Starfighter, Team Sonic Racing, The Messenger, The Wolf Among Us, Thief, Tiny Tina's Assault, 
on Dragon Keep and Transistor. And I know I have so many more games, <laughs> but those were the ones where I'm like, I'm going to try to prioritize these. And that total is about 86 games, which means I'd have to be 1.6 games per week. And if you know me, you know that's probably not super likely. And God forbid I like anything else that comes out this year and that kind of gets out of the backlog list of what I do. Uh, and I think that this whole process can be really constructive in terms of getting around to playing these games if it goes well. And hopefully the point is that I get to try a lot of new games and have a lot of amazing first time experiences. But with that being said, I think it's important that we have goals, but they need to be smart goals. That, that means specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. And for specific and measurable, we have 86 games, 365 days. And that could be achievable, but probably not without not with me working 40 hours a week. So let's try to be more realistic. Let's reduce this number down to the unfinished games, the very high priority and high priority games. Um, I think that amount of games is good. That brings us down to just 31 games, which is a lot more doable. Granted that I have a head start on some of these games, let's just bump it up to 36 games. With this total, we're looking about three games a month. And I think three games a month is pretty good because that's like a AAA title every month and then like an indie and like an unfinished game that I just didn't beat or like something that's like in that 10 hour range that I think I can do within a week. Things like that. And then with this... I think that's a really good goal to have. I think 36 seems pretty reasonable, three games a month, especially if I focus on smaller games. If you're interested in watching me tackle this backlog, I'm getting straight into it today, actually, on the first day of the year. Since I have the day off, I'll be live playing through God of War Ragnarok over on my Twitch channel. I'd love if you could make it and join me for what I'm told has been an amazing experience. And that should be, you know, around 2 o'clock. Hopefully, if I get this video uploaded in time, it might might take a little little longer but we'll see we'll see how much editing i actually do we'll see but i'm planning a live on twitch and youtube um i've never done a youtube stream before i have it scheduled i did i think it makes sense but yeah we'll see um we'll definitely be on twitch I, we're gonna try the youtube new year new me new things you know let's do it and you know thank you guys so much for watching hope you all have a wonderful day and i'll see you all later peace Oh, 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 oh,